we move into beginner's guide number 33 for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, we're definitely looking at characters now that I've either not spent a great deal of time with and I've overlooked them, or characters that I have played around with and they just simply haven't clicked for me at all. Now I won't spoil it just yet which category the character we're looking at tonight, Black Widow, falls into. So in the video anyway, to give you an idea of how she plays, we'll start off, we'll check out her stats and we'll do a quick overview. We'll then have a look at her abilities, we'll check out her team bonuses, we'll talk about the synergy attacks available and the characters she can synergize well with and characters she doesn't synergize well with at all. We'll then look at the build options available in the optimal ISO way, we'll check out her alternative costume and then we'll finish up with a quick summary. So let's start off with the overview. So Black Widow then is what you could consider a hybrid character because she does have ranged and melee attacks but by far the emphasis is on the melee side of things. She's got one ranged attack, you can see the other three abilities are all melee and the same applies for her light and heavy attack as well. She has got the energy tag that goes through her kit but she can also apply that element shock and that's actually really important when it comes to building her. Now I will mention that with that element shock it uh, applies to the light attack, it applies to Widow's Kiss, and it applies to Widow's Bite as well. So there's two abilities in your heavy attack that it doesn't actually apply to. But once again, once we actually get to the build section, we can talk about what skills you'll be using and what ISO you'll want to use. And if you want to actually make use of the shock element, as a great element, it's actually the best one there damage-wise. Now, when we look at her stats, they are very average, but a lot of characters fall into this pool, so our strength is a C, vitality is D, mastery is a D, resilience is a C, durability is a C, and then finally her energy is a C there. So as mentioned, stats pretty lacklustre, but we do have numerous characters in the game where our stats are lacklustre, but their kit makes up for it. So let's actually check out our abilities now. The first ability we have here is her range one which is called covering fire so really a barrage of bullets you can fire out and they do pierce enemies now this is the first ability you unlock and if you're not actually using it as a synergy attack to proc ricochet then it can feel a little bit underwhelming it can be useful for taking out a boss if your health is on the lower side and you've just about take them out and then you want to play it safe but overall it's a, an ability that outside of using it as a synergy i wouldn't really use this one at all the next ability we have here is Widow's Kiss, and this one's very interesting in respect that it allows you to add shock to your baton, so you can add it to your own attacks, but as we mentioned earlier on in the video, it's only about half of our attacks that actually have the shock attribute added to them. You can add the shock element to ally attacks, but the actual area for you to do that is relatively small, so you can't really rely on this to add shock to other allies at all. This one here it actually works as a self synergy with the next skill that we're going to look at in a moment, but out of the skills that I do use, because I don't really use cover and fire at all, out of there are three skills that I use, this is probably the one I use the least, but let's actually check out the next ability now, which is Widowmaker. The next ability we have here is Widowmaker, we throw a series of grenades. Now I'll use this for two reasons, one, it can be nice to take out low level trash, and two, if you need to proc a synergy attack, so let's say that a boss is actually staggered and then you need to stun them, then you can throw out Widowmaker and then you can follow up with either Widow's Kiss or Widow's Bite to create that synergy and then stun the boss, so really nice combination there. So it's with this final ability here that Black Widow falls into the category of characters that I did overlook that are actually a whole lot of fun to play and pretty effective as well. So this is Widow's Bite. Now this one, as mentioned, it can be used as a self synergy. So you'll start off with Widowmaker and then you've got the choice of following up with Widow's Kiss or Widow's Bite. Personally, I prefer Widow's Bite because it keeps you mobile, you're jumping up in the air, whereas with Widow's Kiss you have to actually stand still to cast it, so there's a good chance you can actually be hit while you're doing that and she does a pretty low survivability as well. Now Widow's Kiss of course will give you the shock on your attacks and it's mainly just really your basic attack, your light attack that it will be affecting because Widow's Bite already has shock built in 
and a lot of times when you use this you'll stun the enemy and then you can follow up by using your basic attack for further damage there but we're going to talk about that a lot more when we do actually get to the build section but combination wise for our abilities then cover and fire can be nice for creating ricochet on occasion or taking down a boss if they're just about defeated and maybe you don't want to get too close to them but by and large I'll be using Widowmaker and then I'll be using Widow's Bite as well. Now next up let's have a look at the team bonuses that are available for her. Team bonus wise then, Black Widow is actually part of a whopping 9 teams, so just to run over the teams here, uh, it's Femme Fatales, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Avengers, Partners, Back in Black, Sharpshooters, Women of Marvel, Web Warriors, that one I don't really understand to be honest, and Agile Fighters as well. Now if we look at the characters that she synergizes the best with, you've got Elektra, it's four different teams she appears in. And then you've got Hawkeye who appears in five different teams. So obviously all the time they spent in Budapest together has really allowed them to hone their skills when they do work as a team. So that's the team bonuses. Let's have a look at the synergy attacks that are available. At the time of recording this video then with the characters we have available, that's just the base characters and the Curse of the Vampire characters, Black Widow can do a total of 252 different synergy attacks, which means she's very much middle of the road in regards to the number she can do. Now despite that, the fact that she can self-synergize, that is exceptionally important. I really can't stress it enough and I've been meaning to do a video on the importance of self-synergies. I'll hopefully get around to that sooner rather than later, but the fact she can self-synergize is exceptionally important. It's just means you'll no longer miss stunning or staggering the boss when you get that opportunity when they're down. I know personally it happens to me a lot. But if we look at the, the synergy traits that are available, you've got rapid fire which can convert into ricochet which is great. You've got slam, shock and explosive and they can convert into a fair amount of synergy attacks. Top 5 characters that she synergizes well with, but again it's not really needed due to the self synergies, but it's Hulk, Drax, Hawkeye, good to see him there again, Luke Cage and Miles Morales. The bottom 5, but once again the fact she can self synergize means you can run her with these characters and you can still get your synergy attacks in. But the bottom 5 are Thanos, Moon Knight, Captain America, Morbius and Scarlet Witch way at the bottom as well there. So that's all the synergy attacks, let's have a look at the build options that are available. With Black Widow then there's actually a fair amount of different builds you can run with or you can choose to go more for the range side of things, you can go for melee, you can go for the hybrid, you can choose to add that element or not. Now the one that I personally enjoy is really pretty simple but I found it to be really pretty effective as well. So this is your damage and crowd control build and it's all about using your, your Widow's Bite, that's your main attack that you are using to stun targets and then you'll follow up with your light attack to do additional damage and if you need synergy damage or you need to take out a group of bosses you can use Widowmaker and then follow up with Widow's Bite. Now the ISO that I would use I actually like to add uh, as the shock ability a tribute to the user, that way I don't have to worry about using the attack that would actually add the element to her at all, I can just concentrate on using the abilities that are the most effective. I like to also place the decreased number of attacks to inflict status effect by 34% on her, meaning when you use Widow's Bite you're more likely to jump in amongst a group of enemies and actually shock them and then you can just start wailing away with your light attack to get your energy back up. Damage ISO wise, the one that I would actually use is just the flat increased damage of attacks by 16.5% because yes the attacks that we are using by and large are the shock ones but you'll be using self synergies quite a lot and they won't actually benefit from the damage from that, they only benefit from the flat damage. So that's the reason I use that overall. We don't have any crit in the kit at all because it's not needed due to the fact you'll be shocking enemies so often. So that's the build option enemy. Let's have a look at the alternative costume. At the moment then for Black Widow the alternative costume is just a simple recolouring and Team Ninja really need to get their skates on because they said that we would have alternative costumes for all characters by early 2020 and it's something like 33 characters that still need another costume then I'm a little bit worried that they'll even fulfil that promise to be honest but for Black Widow simple recolouring it changes the costume to white 
nothing else other than that's different really. This will be one of the first costumes you unlock because you only need 16 stars in the Gamma Rift which is the first one available. So let me know in the comments below anyway what alternative costume you would like to see coming for Black Widow and let's now just finish up with a quick summary. So Black Widow is a character then in the process of doing this beginner's guide for her actually had a whole lot of fun and I would say she has a character that I definitely overlooked and I do regret that to an extent. Her kit as well is really interesting in the fact that you can actually make it quite complicated by using all her skills or if you want you can keep it really simple how I've chosen to actually do the build setup as well there. So I do like a character that's got versatility and that's something she's definitely got and she looks pretty awesome rocking the, the stun batons and then you've got that synergy which allowed me to put in the joke about Hawkeye and Budapest as well so all good in that respect. So the next beginner's guide we'll have will be Daredevil. I've got all the editing done I just need to get the commentary done. I'm struggling a little bit with these at the moment just due to the fact that I'm really burnt out with the game. There's been nothing to really do or talk about for about the last six weeks which is pretty disappointing and yeah it's making it tough to do these beginner's guides but I've not got too many more to do so I will endeavour to get through them. I'm not going to give up at this point, I'm going to cover every single character before I'm actually finished with the game so don't worry about that at all but as always thanks for tuning in, leave a comment below to help drive engagement, hit the like and share button as well and I'll see you all again soon.